Hello guys, excuse the, uh, the racket in the background. I'm back in Canesham Town, just outside Bristol on the River Chew, fishing a public stretch, car park right behind me. Uh, still the depths of winter, so I'm fishing an ultralight setup. I've got three pound line on the reel, one and a half pound line on the hook length, and that's tied to a, a Camazon, I think it's a B540 ultralight wire hook, to bread flake with a free running rotten bottom. That's on the two pound line as well, just some split shot. And the only thing stopping that from coming down to the hook length is the knot and that's because there's so many snags here um, you've got a duck pond just opposite rats swimming around look lovely um, but that duck pond means there's always a steady um, amount of feed going in for the roach there are a few barbel in here perch trout we even had grayling here so i'm not sure what's going to show up might be nothing at all because it's crystal clear i'm not going to put any bait out because that could be a kiss of death because of the sheer number of minnows you really don't want them at home in on your bait and kill your swim so I've probably got a couple of hours of light and I'm going to be fishing with um, my mate Justin who's in a couple of pegs up that way. I think he's hoping for something a bit more sizeable. Oh yeah, fish on. Let's take him to the other side of the river. Blimey, what's that? If that's a roach, it's a nice one. Could be, you know. There's a clutch singing. It might be a small chub. We'll see in a minute. Could of course be a trout, any of those in here. It's quite funny really because I was just saying to Justin that chub a few and far between now in here. Keep them away from the roots, lad. Two and a half pound bottom. No, two pound bottom. Oh he has done me. No, he hasn't. <laughs> Whoops. There we go. I'll give you a closer look actually. Sure you've all seen the chub before for those that haven't that come down here and fish you'll get an awful lot of base in this river and the chub they give away and there's that king caning fin at the back there it's there big king caning fin there you go nice chub that's another fish on it's another good fish on that's no, not it's a snag <laughs> yeah it's gone well, i just did that bit of loose line in case it's a fish that's taken me into the snag Good stuff. That's on there. A little bit of chopped pork. Is it? Own brand luncheon meat. Oh, nice. That's a nice one. Just nice. Thinking, I thought it was a big, uh, a big bow. I don't put torchlight on the water. Big reckon he is. I don't know. What do you say? Going on for two pounds? Oh, bigger than that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very nice. It's been a few years since I fished Cainshaw Memorial Park. Um, it was nice to see the water flowing and it was nice to see chub reappearing. So I haven't seen many of those for a while and I was actually getting quite concerned. Um, I got home to find an email from an old friend of mine um, letting me know that about half a mile upstream, there's been a significant change in the river dynamics, the flow, um, which has got alarm bells ringing. So I'm now up at Chewton Place about half a mile up river to go and have a look. Yeah, so downstream is, is flowing nicely. Always good to see a bit of water movement. But on the other side, wow. The hatch is raised fully. Right, so what do I make of that? Um, I'm absolutely shocked. I imagine it's an intentional conservation effort. It could be because they need to do some engineering work on the banks, but I don't think so. If you've watched my YouTube channel for a while, you'll know that there's quite a few trout fishing videos of me and my mate Ian fishing on the River Chew further up. I'm gonna to have to go up and investigate because if it's this low here, I dread to think what it's like up river. Here we've got a massive island of silt that's been deposited and captured by all the woody debris. That's presumably a fallen tree. Yeah, there's the root fallen tree and it's picked up all the silt and strangled the river and that's that gives you an idea of what the river is going to be reduced to um, if this if this is the way it's going to be in the future the river is going to be shrunk hi there sorry to try to point the camera away from you okay. um, i'm doing a video on on the river yes. it's a river that means a lot to me i just wonder if you knew anything about the the lowered water levels do you know anything about it well, yes, I do, because I lived there. Ah, oh, brilliant. Just a person to talk to, well, then. Well, yes and no. Uh, I'm not on camera. I can switch it off if you like. That's fine. <laughs> 
just had an interesting chat with a lady who um, has lived next to this river for a number of years and seen it go downhill in her words over the last 20 and in her words the uh, river management has focused purely on pollution in replacement of everything else that needs to be done to a river that's so heavily um, altered by by man it's all falling in to my left that's falling in we walk around here a little bit further where the water's whizzed around this corner you can see the bank stability here that's gone that tree will be in the river by next year so will all that mud this river has just gone downhill rapidly um, because no one wants to manage it it's a river that needs managing you can't feed the whole of bristol their water supply without managing that that water uh, downstream the trees are falling in the banks are falling apart and the river is on its knees in the summer because of lack of flow chew valley lake was drawn down to its lowest i've ever known it to be over the summer and there's not enough compensatory flow going into the river to keep the the wildlife going look it's like a beach it's just sand sand everywhere right i'm now at uplands bridge normally this is underwater you can see from the spit that's coming out that the water's dropped down here by at least two or three again um, the floods in canesham of 1968 that killed eight people were caused by debris in floods hitting a bridge as you lower the water level down in the banks it reduces the stability of them and increases the number of trees falling into the river this is actually um, a, a flood issue and also um, could compromise the bridges the Cainton Mangling Association have had fishing rights along this river for well over 100 years I think now perhaps one of the most revealing things about this is the um, amount of pipes that I'm seeing that um, you didn't know were there all putting, putting um, road runoff and other potential pollutants into the river. But as you can see, the banks are really steep and that's because the River Chew used to have about two thirds more water in it. It shrunk, leaving these great big steep sides either side. But this is a managed river. You can't, <laughs> you can't rewild something that's got a reservoir holding back water for an entire city. So what's my conclusion? Firstly, um, it might be a temporary thing if it's an engineering requirement uh, on that wall uh, down at Chewton Place. I find it bizarre to think that they would um, allow the whole of this river stretch to be dropped just to do that little bit of work because what they could have done is put a bund across and di diverted flow just to isolate that one little area. If it's a wildlife conservation effort, where was the consultation or public announcements? What a mess. And it's increasingly starting to look like this throughout its course. What you've got to remember is that the Chew Valley Lake is at its capacity. It's overflowing. The outspill is putting water into this river. Most of the year it's not. I'm going to go and visit the, um, the former president of Canesham Angling Association. He's lived in Canesham all his life, I think, and see if he can uh, shed any light as to what's going on. Wow. So I've gone and seen the ex-president of Canesham AAA. We both exchanged our theories as to what the cause was of the river dropping, both um, speculating that maybe it was Bristol Avers, Bristol Avon Rivers Trust or conservation efforts in place. Um, after a good chat, I went down back to Chewton Place, rang on the doorbell and just asked the owner outright um, whether he was anything to do with dropping the river. And his answer was yes, the Environment Agency have given him full license to be in control of the sluice there and he can do as he pleases. He's dropped it out so he can do um, some maintenance work on the leet and the wall that uh, I showed you earlier. He actually seemed genuinely concerned when I started to tell him the consequences that that would have on the fish population um, and explained to him how it would present an even bigger issue in the summer when the river's not flowing um, from overspill on Chew Valley Lake and Chew Magna Reservoir. Uh, yeah, I think he actually seemed slightly concerned there. My frustrations, therefore, are directed at the Environment Agency. The Environment Agency have put in stocks of barbel in that stretch that we looked at 
consecutively for 2011, 2012, 2013, stocking the river with barbel. Well, all those fish now have been flushed out because that bloke living at Chewton Place is entitled just to lift the hatches and empty the river. It just blows my mind that environmental management could be placed in the hands of a wealthy landowner um, who happens to have a sluice on his property. It just blows my mind. Thank <laughs> you.